I'll give you a freaking wolf fur for yeah. you know that yeah. sixteen years of corn, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> I thought you said sixteen years of corn. Oh. I was like, terrible deal. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Timmerman, and I'm the fifth lesser known tech giant currently being investigated by antitrust regulators. Hi, I'm Rob Shauger. Surely you can't be serious. And I'm El Kutri, and I am the fourth Jonas brother. And we are the co founders of the No Bull Company. What's up, everybody? Today's episode is brought to you by Go Tuck Yourself, the shirt tucking aid to help you stop being a slob. Bro, tuck it in. So ladies, the next time your man goes out and he's looking a little sloppy, tell him to go tuck himself. What's up, Buzz Nation? Welcome to I'm a Little Buzz, the show where we bring a ridiculous amount of life to business while sharing a glass or can of whatever makes us happy and sharing stories about what gets us buzzed. Rob, what's getting you buzzed right now? I had an awesome uh, Saturday of golf. Took my dad and my brother uh, golfing for the day. Nice. Beautiful weather, nice little breeze. We all hit the ball pretty well. That's always good. My dad's still kicking our ass in his late 60s. Still chasing dad, huh? Shit. I thought, I'm like, yep, I'm gonna get him. Nope. No, not happening. Dad's like, oh, you guys, nice, nope. nice try, Rob. Okay. He is nice slow and steady, just like down the middle every time. He doesn't hit the ball, you know, like super far, um, but he is steady. Yeah. Eh? Gets you every time. Like yeah. you play with like a like like an old dude who's just got physical like limitation. I'm not talking about your dad, but like just in general, you yeah. play with an old yeah. dude who's like oh, like you know, 70 years old or whatever. Can't move around really good, but then just. Yep. And then you come in as a young, like trying yeah. to smash the trying ball. To freaking horse that ball. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Water. Nope. Didn't happen. Yeah. That's how my dad was. Clean both our clocks. Yep. Actually. With paintball? Pink ball. Oh, pink ball. That's what I thought you said too. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and I would come home, he would just be like, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be on the ready. <laughs> get off, get off the school bus. <laughs> yeah, like, have a gun. Like, out. <laughs> I told um, you to wear your mask at all times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, the red ones hurt more. Oh yeah. Uh, what's giving you buzz? What's giving me buzz is actually a, the venue I played Friday. Yeah. Coloca Winery. It's out in uh, Fairhaven. How do you say that? Coloca. 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 Hawaiian. I like Col- Coloca. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the hell it is, but it's awesome. The venue. Oh, the venue's super cool. Brand new. It's a year old. First time I've ever played there. They have it all. They got food. They got the wood fire pizza. They, it's a winery, obviously. So yeah. they have acres and acres of land and wine. Sits right in the water. Fun fact: the guy who started it, he's a chiropractor, and he whoever if you've, anyone's ever been to the chiropractor, have you guys been? Yeah. So you know the little, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the like clicker. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what the hell it's for. Yeah. But everybody knows the clicker. He invented it. Come on. Uh, yeah. And I was like. Of course, you built this. Like, <laughs> yeah, my, my chiropractor uses it on me every time. Yeah. Like, only down at the tailbone. Yep, great. Well, my, that's, mine's that's an old, that seems intimate. Mine's an old school <laughs> dude. I don't know about the clicker. What's the clicker? The, I don't know what the clicker is. Like, it's like the it's like that thing you use for your muscles. The gun. Yeah, except it's like, you know, the 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 connection point is much smaller, and he can they can turn up or turn down the intensity, but it's a rapid it, it, fire. Yeah. It's like a muscle stimulus type. Ah. Stimulatory type thing, but it is well. So it doesn't like cr- it doesn't crack your back. No. It's not no. doing that. Oh no, no, no. It's sending a pulse like through the yeah. through the tapping. Huh? But the and best he freaking way, created he, that. He invented it, and then now hence the money to start a winery. There you have. There, that's him. how he funded his business. Yeah. But this place is it's unreal. That's awesome. It's unreal. You got to nice. check it out. Yeah. So we should go there and have a meeting there one night. Deal. Done. Deal. You. Uh, I'm getting pretty buzzed about my light salmon colored shorts. Show the audience. <sighs> putting the vibe out. John, are those the Just nine, the the nine inch? Out. These are the nine inch Hanging shorts. By the bar, putting the vibe out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a bar, so I can just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't say that's. I so would say you is, said light is salmon. salmon in the notes. Lighter? Is salmon is a little more. Like an orange. Yeah, Did you look at the label shade. when you bought them? I don't know. No. The, They're just so magical. I don't right? know. And they got a little strut. Uh, four-way stretch. A four-way stretch. Oh, maybe, nothing maybe, better than the four-way nine stretch. Nine inch highs on nine those inch, puppies. Nine inch. Show a little thigh. Could that be considered a nude? I know. Oh. So my my ex is 
they used to be like, I'm going to get the nude collar. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean... Ne- depends it, it, depends no, on the time color. of year. No. It's a color. Yeah. Maybe, should we just make it so that n- now John wears nude shorts? <laughs> nude shorts? <laughs> oh, I love your nude shorts, John. I don't know what color they are, but I love them. I love them, too. And they're really comfortable. And it's a Target win. Another yeah. Target win. Two doop, for doop. two. Target. What about you? Did you get your shorts at Target, like we said? I did not. Yeah, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> I had 20% Just off. Just spike like, your drink on the table I right spike now. I want to spike it in face. I needed to do a one-stop shop. So I needed... I wanted I wanted to do some uh, stretch bands. Oh, right? tension bands? Oh, yeah. Tension bands. Yeah. So I'm like, I got a coupon for Dick's. Dick's I is walk pretty in. Awesome. Can't, like, no, of course it's awesome. Section right, yeah. for the freaking stretch bands? Empty. Oh. oh Gone. Yeah. In-home workouts. Nothing Nothing left. I'm like... Yeah. yeah, but still, you would think by now... Something, right? It would have been re- replenished. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Why are there still like yep. supply issues? I mean, we're pretty deep in China this. went through their Chinese New Year and that's oh. like a that's like a planned thing right. where they're off for that's like a, a month. Or, yeah. I don't know. Isn't yeah. it crazy? Oh. It's usually so but then COVID also like fucked everything up. So like yep. the normal planning for the Chinese New Year didn't work hit right and now everyone's out of stock. Like there's still tons of people out of stock with random shit. Target actually I went in. Oh yeah, yeah. And they had nothing. Part of it too is because people aren't sh- going out as much and shopping. So mm-hmm. like uh, drove by a car sales place that we passed on the way to camp. Mm-hmm. Parking lot had like oh, every yeah. third spot was like full. Yeah, with a with a car for sale. Like they're just well, it wasn't full inventory. No, like people just or places just are not filling up the inventory because they're not selling through as yeah. much. Yeah. Oh well, that's crazy. Hey, Buzz Nation, are you a Gary Vaynerchuk fan? How about David Meltzer? How about Shea Robottom, Constant Schwartz Marini, and more? That's right, Noble 2020 2.0 is coming up April 8th, 2021. Do you want a free ticket? I know how you can get one. Head over to empathywines.com and buy any 12 bottles of delicious empathy, rosé, white, the red, and use the code NOBLE2020 at checkout and you will get a free $250 front section seating ticket to watch Gary, to watch Shay, and to watch all the amazing speakers April 8th. Head over to noble2020.com for more info and we'll see you there. So without further ado, now is the time when we cheers to life love, lots of laughter, and preaching kindness, love, and looking all over the place for your glasses while they are still on your f***ing face. Anyways, uh, today's show is on creative ways to fund your business. Oh. You can fund by money, by barter, clickers, by clickers, selling those <laughs> for boatloads of money. Um, but one uh, lovely wife, Lindsay, she came up with this topic for us, and, and it was, uh, one of the things she said is, um, and she helps get our guests on the show. She reaches out. She mm-hmm. um, interacts with a lot of entrepreneurs, and and one of the things that keeps a lot of people from starting is like, <clears throat> I don't have the money to do it. Right. Like, I don't know how to do this. Do I need to build an office? Do it? Actually, we have a good friend who uh, left her job and went into. Uh, she's in. She's a therapist, mm-hmm. and she went into her own therapy practice. Yeah. Just a little bit before COVID, which is kind of a scary thing for her, but. You know, she's like, oh, I need to get an office. I need to buy desks and chairs and all yeah. this, you know, all this stuff. And like, I need to fe- like be professional. Yeah. Well, then COVID hit and she's like, shit, I can just do this from my home. You know, like. Boom. It, yeah. There you have it. So, so she didn't, you know, really need to spend the money that she didn't really have yet. Sure. From, from lack of business on an office. But like, people just think you need to spend all this money and do all of this right. stuff. Like, I'm going to have to go get a $50,000 business loan. Yeah. No. Like, just to buy stuff. And then they don't even know what it is. So, we're going to talk about creative ways. And and for the viewers or listeners out there, um, we grew this business in a very interesting way, which we'll, we'll without a doubt discuss. Yeah. Um, but this is intended to be some inspiration for those out there that are trying to do their own thing. And without making- breaking... Yeah. Their ass. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So I'll start out with um, one of the. So I I get this. I have a the show here for the waffles that I do on yeah. LinkedIn. I get yep. these questions and um, one interesting question that I think pertains to this um, can kind of jumpstart into the conversation. 
is I got the question, uh, should I start a service business or a product business, product based business? Yeah. Right? So um, that is a good way to kind of jump into how you could, could or would fund either or. Uh, because a service based business, if you provide a service uh, that doesn't require a lot of equipment to do, mm -hmm. like marketing or like mm -hmm. therapy, <clears throat> things like that, where it's like basically your knowledge, mm -hmm. you don't really, you don't need any income. You don't need any startup capital. I started Good Monster with nothing. Yeah, maybe it's, twenty-five bucks for business cards. It's yeah, that. yeah. I don't. I didn't even buy business cards. Like I literally just uh, somebody wanted us to film a show. I guess you know you need a camera, but these days you yeah. use a cell phone. Yeah. You already have one. At that time, we didn't have a cell phone that had you know that quality camera. Yeah. But um, so that would be one thing is to identify whether you are a service uh, saxophone. Right, like events, obviously yeah. you have to buy the saxophone. Well, yeah, but let's say, let's then it's your time. Event business. Yeah, then it's There's your no... time, you know, getting into it. What were you doing, John, when you, when you started Good Monster? What was your source of income at that time? Uh, I was a marketing, like a, a area marketing director for a law firm. So you had a so, so this is a good point for the audience. So you had a full time job, mm -hmm. right? This is where you hear Gary talk about like you know, your your side hustle. Mm -hmm. Everybody should have a side hustle. So. Mm -hmm full-time job paying the bills and yeah. then in your your extra time like you know i think a lot of people today um i want to be careful with this i think there's a an expectation that you know hey i worked my my nine to five and and, and that's it like you know t to to me and i think the most entrepreneurs like well that's half the day what what, what are you going to do with the other half of the day yeah. So you got to go figure it out, and so that's what you did, right? You were, yeah, mine, time doing that. Mine was just a creative outlet. Like I, you know, I had my previous business partner. We started the, the YouTube show and had a little, you know, fun with it because my job was like ridiculously boring and unfulfilling. Right. And I just needed that, you know, creativity. And similar to him, his, you know, he hated his job and wanted to work on something on on the outside, right? But, but when we started to get people to say like, hey, can you come film this for us? It, we already He already had the equipment from, uh, actually that's not even true. He borrowed the equipment. He borrowed the camera equipment from, I think his job that he hated. Old Jasmine Star there. And, and Jasmine uh, Star inspo. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we, we literally started with, with no money. And so if you're, the point is if you're in a service business, yeah. there's really <clears throat> creative ways, borrow the equipment that you need, lawn care, Right. So here's a good point on that. So mm -hmm. we would offer a prepayment discount. That's how cash flow, you grab cash flow. You still have to manage the cash flow. So if you don't know how to manage that, then you're, you're really shit creek. I mean, like, it's, it's going to be a mess. But yeah. if you can manage your cash flow, so Al, you're going to pay me up front, get a 5% discount for the season if you pay me up front for the year. Right. Well, you get a certain percentage of that to happen. So if, 30 40 percent of your clients do that yeah, now you've got shape. startup money mm -hmm. so now you yeah. can go buy your first round of chemicals and materials or whatever you need mm -hmm. and then you've got your other people that are floating in and then it's how do you manage your yeah. money collection mm -hmm. is yeah. also important <clears throat> mm -hmm. right so if you <clears throat> hey if you say hey it's net 10 you know whatever or you know a credit card on file i mean and again it technology has changed so much too i mean it just makes it so much easier i mean hell today you can go mow mrs jones's lawn you pull out your square stick it on your phone swipe the credit card and yeah. you got paid yeah. before you and even go down the you, street lawn care uh snow removal those are i wish i had like the you know desire and, <laughs> and skill to do that but i there were times i paid my my snow my plow guy like like three or four hundred bucks for a season, and I and he came like you three know, times, seven times maybe. Yeah, in a yeah. whole because yeah. there was it's just a, no they, it's there a was no reason shoot. for him to. Yeah. And he won that year. Other yeah. years he yeah. very you, much you lost. You killed him. Yeah, yeah, he crushed him. It's on a it, game of chess, like, and you just spanked him. You know. <laughs> okay, let's look forward to next year. You yeah. know, like we'll see it. But either yeah. way, I'm I'm always going to do that. But that's a great way to. Yeah, in barter, I I always had clients that would barter. I know mm -hmm. we've talked about that before on the show. Oh, yeah. So I had this one guy, great story. Um, he retired twice. He was a cigar broker. Mm. 
old Italian guy, and he'd uh, I, I you know I'd see him in the spring, and I'd come up, and he comes walking out with his caper hat on, and he'd uh, Robbie, and he'd come up and squeeze me on the cheek. It's Robbie, it's so good to see you. How's the family doing? He's like, come here, my boy. Come you know come come look what I got for you. And he boom pops open the trunk on the Cadillac. I'm like, the first time he did this, I'm like, is he gonna like tie me up and throw me in the trunk? Yeah. <laughs> like what's, what's going on here? But he's got the cigars in the in the trunk. He's like, here, here's a box. Take this for the year. And uh, you know, you know, he tell me what the retail value was, and I'm like, okay, you know, and thanked him for his uh, for the deal. And you know, I mean, it was it was just an enjoyable yeah. relationship with the customer. Yeah. You know. And so there was always people that were willing to do that. Right. That's it's such a fascinating and there's there is a barter economy sort of like happening. Totally. It's very small right now, but like yep. there's even apps. I, f- I forget the names of them, but there you can barter things, right? Mm-hmm. So bartering is it's the oldest way to do business. Yeah. Right? Like I'll yeah. I'll give you a freaking wolf fur for yeah. you know that yeah. sixteen years of corn, right? Like. <laughs> I mean, I thought you said 16 years of corn. Oh. I was like, terrible deal. Like, Lost. One wolfer for 16 years of corn. Yeah, okay. That's how Al oh, got yeah. the bearskin rug in front of his fireplace. That's oh. right. I traded out 16, 16 years, years of corn. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's the oldest way to, to do business. And, you know, now there's currency, right? Yeah. So so now currency is a thing. You Money to buy a house and, you know, whatever yeah. else. You, money I to buy stuff. I can't wait till cryptocurrency becomes a but, real thing. Yeah. That's going to be strange. Yeah. It already is. Yeah. But like, but, but yeah, so, so bartering is super, super attractive to me to the point where I'm looking for it now. Like I'm looking for, actively looking for opportunities <laughs> with Good Monster to like trade services. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, we use some of the, video from good monster to be able to offer for you know sponsors and and whatnot for 100 you know for no bull like it's just a no-brainer it's a no-brainer. if you can find something valuable like if you can go play saxophone for oh, i've bartered tons of things yeah for a two-hour concert you know in normal times i guess yeah uh in exchange for like a month's worth of like restaurant food for free or something like i don't know you, you know Whatever what i'm saying like is, the, yeah. The, I mean, everybody always needs something. Oh, and you always need something. Yeah. And people are so just like, oh, I guess I have to pay for it. Well, not if you're creative. You yeah. Know? You know, like the other, this was this is a very small and insignificant example, but it happened so organically and it made me think about the barter process. So, and it, this is like all psychological stuff, but there was, um, <laughs> it is. Because I was talking to this like therapist that somebody suggested like I'm trying to get a therapist like to help my mom with some stuff. She you know she needs a little assistance to get some shit straight, like we all do. But the therapist was like, "Oh, I don't take insurance. You know, it's X Y Z per hour." And I'm like, yeah. "Oh, great." And I was like, um, "Oh, I asked her. I said, well, oh, that's fine. But do you take Venmo, cash, credit card? Like, what? How do you? What? Do you, what's your payment process?" She was like, "Well, I'll just check right now. Like, I really the credit card thing's a little over my head." And I was like, oh, okay, well, I, you know, I've got a few businesses that I run credit cards all the time. So if you need help with those kind of credit card solutions, you know, I'd be happy to just, like, help you. Yeah. And so she was like, oh, gosh, that'd be so great. And then it was a wash. And she, like, in exchange for my yeah. knowledge of credit card yeah. information, yeah. I didn't have to pay for the, the, the first session or whatever it was. Yeah. So it was an instant barter that came out organically and it... Saved me about 125 bucks and saved her a, a lifetime of, you know, hassle. hassle. And, yeah. Yeah. All that time to so, figure it out. I but that's pe- how fast it happens. People need to like, identify, like realize how incredibly valuable it, it like this is like thinking of, of bartering could be. I mean, I don't know how big you could go with this. Like, that's a question. Like, could you like. Well, like how? Like what's the biggest barter I mean, you think that's ever? We're bartering ever... pretty big right now. No, I'm at, <laughs> I'm, at I'm at like uh, six figure big. Yeah. What do you mean? But like a like a house. Like oh, what? Like I... okay, you know, you find a house you want, love the house. You go up there to the the person. You find out they, you know, whatever they own some company. But like this this would be like in my in my world. I'd go up and say I'll give you five years of like full service marketing for your business for your house to transfer ownership or to rent no like ownership like like here's make sure the money's the same yeah. you know it's a right. whatever two hundred fifty thousand dollar house and 
and that's how much it would cost That'd to do be an this. Interesting like, deal right isn't there. that interesting? Where is the house? Is it an appreciating market? It's in my head right now, but um, <laughs> let's make it in an appreciating market. Yeah. So maybe I'd have to add a year. Yeah. You should test like, that out. Just to, it would depend on a few things. How knowledgeable the person was about real estate. Right. Which let's hope in their case they're not very. They're knowledgeable. not very knowledgeable. <laughs> But they have a, desperately they have a great business, though. That would right. also be much easier for us. Let's try it. There's a half a million dollar house you behind our property right here. Maybe universe? I'll go knock on their door later tonight. I think we should. <laughs> I'm all about it. Let's do it right after this podcast. Yeah. Like, hey, what do we get to lose? Yeah. Nothing. What if it worked? Oh, my God. Gosh. Can you imagine that? But see, that's what I'm saying. Like, it would take a, an incredible person to, like, even entertain something like that. Right? Like well, until not, it became more normal, until, right, right. But I think it's the the coolest thing ever. I think it's I am. Oh yeah, when I'm asked to do it on Facebook, when I'm selling things on Facebook Marketplace, and they're like, "Do you want to trade?" I'm like, "No." Yeah, but you don't need it. I Imagine know. if it was like a tiny, like a uh, little tiny Coke bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you'd be all in. <laughs> I know. They're like, I don't know. Like tiny I have Coke bottle, your car. Done. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I have a hundred of these tiny, like old school little glass bottles full of actual I'll trade you the Durango. Coke and Sprite. And all right. Like if they did that, you wouldn't be a, li- a little bit into, maybe not for the Durango, but I'm saying like if it was uh, oh, that's pretty banged up, yeah, um, it might be worth it actually. No, I, yeah. If it was something I needed, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Cause I, ha- I like, <laughs> but also you, if you need the actual money right, right. to then pay for like bills, like that's a different story too. Right. So that we're talking all service-based stuff, which is pretty, well, not necessarily products. You can do that with products too. We've, uh, we've done that too. We're doing it with products right now, sort of. Yeah. Right. We're so, doing it with wine. so to catch everyone up listening, like we have a, a, a deal the the way we got Gary Vaynerchuk was mm-hmm. we can't afford it because we don't have a hundred thousand dollars plus. No. And we said, what does Gary Vaynerchuk want right now? Well, he's got his wine company he just launched. He's investing a lot yeah, of effort into promoting that and and building that. So why don't we offer to buy or sell a shitload of his wine to get him to come speak for free? We've told the story before. We don't have to get into it. We we basically negotiated to, to make it happen. And there's a product that we're just moving around from like one to the other in order to like get him to come speak. Right. So like he's getting, his company's getting the revenue. The people are getting the wine. They're also getting a free ticket to our event, right? Which is the leverage we have on the, see if I can talk through this. That's the leverage we have on the, the purchaser. We're giving them the free ticket. Right. Correct. Uh, the people are giving Gary's company, Empathy, it's the like a three money. way barter, actually. And Gary's giving us the speaking. Yeah. We can put a flow chart for you guys on that. Yeah, we, we might have to pop up a, a graphic, graphic to, to show. Just confuse myself right there. Because I'm very lost. <laughs> I want to cancel the event. <laughs> Wait, we're, we're in the Is triangle. We're in the triangle zone now. That's beyond yeah. my. <laughs> that, wait, what? Is it, what? Yeah. You get a, a Texas instrument out. Yeah, it would actually break. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't uh, calculate it. Oh, what was I just gonna say about that? But that, like that, point. the way, like yes, we got lucky to a certain extent. We also hustled and like got creative with it. But that's the whole point of the show is like there are always creative yeah. ways to get your business. Michelle uh, Little, Perfect Granola. Uh huh. She uh, got no's from a lot of investors. You know, um, she talked about how women get two point eight percent of funding. She got a lot of no's. People didn't understand. Um, didn't understand her business. Uh, that one idiot said that she was a mom, so she'd never, oh, yeah, like, she'd never be able to invest enough time in her business. Yeah. Right. So she goes to business competitions. That's how she funded her business. Yeah. She went in business pitch competitions, which are yeah. all over the place now. Yeah. And um, not not to beat a dead horse on the bartering thing, but we can beat it. I want to go back to bartering. I love that's it. basically the the foundation of all influencer marketing. I mean, I know there's money involved at this point now, depending on the level you are, but the 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 foundational roots of influencer marketing is bartering. Mm-hmm. You use our product, we'll give it to you for free. You talk about it. That's still uh, so. There's levels of influencer marketing, right? You have right. the mega influencers where that's right, right, they're right. being paid. We're not talking about that. you have you have basically nano, micro, macro, and like mega. That's the way that. 
the, the <laughs> <laughs> well, chart number two. categorize it, but the nano influencers are like us. Yeah. They're like everyday people that use a product a ton and they tell everyone that's all bartering. That's, that's, that's like, Hey, you love our product. Uh, we'll send you a shitload of it. Just tell people about it. Mm -hmm. Wear them, you know, if it's sunglasses or whatever it is. And, um, and, and that's barter economy yeah. at its, at its finest. So then what's the, what's the, uh, the next is bootstrap, like sell one thing at a time. Yeah. Make the money. Well, that's where the service comes from. Like that. I'm a, I'm a huge, huge proponent of using a skill that you have, whatever it is, even if your goal is to build a product based company, mm -hmm. because you can fund with, t I have a friend actually who I just saw on Facebook. She's tutoring kids yeah. in English. Cause they, they're, they're, they, parents are worried about them falling behind yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So she's tutoring. She's not, she's not even a, uh, she's not a teacher. She's like, not even a tutor. Yeah. She's not even a tutor. <laughs> uh, she's a writer, but like, oh, yeah. she's like, same thing. Yeah. She's like, well, I can, I have teach really English, good English, yeah. so I'll teach and, yeah. um, brilliant. Do so it. Anything you can do. Yeah. Using that like, uh, saxophone, you should use that. To go, to go, like I got acquire whatever, like give away free concerts. Yeah, I, I right now. You want a new Durango? You want your Durango fixed? Go offer to a, uh, to the to your mechanic to serenade. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be like, okay, his, get out of here, Kenny G. It's twelve hundred bucks. His, his, family, <laughs> his family one Saturday afternoon in their backyard, yeah. <laughs> sitting by the pool. Maybe you have to find a different mechanic. Kids are flying around. You're just playing yeah. in the corner. I want <laughs> nothing to do with that scenario ever. <laughs> just off in the corner, like the fenced in area behind the pool. The kids are like jumping in. No. They're like unicorn floaties. Mm -hmm. there's, nope. There's Al. Yeah. Bam, no, bam, bam. that would be a very low point for me. They're like throwing hot dogs at you. <laughs> well, well, now, now we're, we're talking. back in. <laughs> Wait, free hot dogs? Uh, <laughs> yeah. A little salami? Yeah, catch them in the back. I hate myself. Uh, that is a funny image though. It is a funny image. Yeah. Well, yeah. Moving on. That's like the that's like the movie where the struggling clown is like sick of his job and he's just getting shit thrown at no, him at I'm parties not, and I'm not there yet. I got a bunch of little You're side above hustles. that, don't worry. Yeah. Let's, I got a let's bunch barter little... for something better and bigger. Yeah. Well speaking of that, I started a um a uh -oh. Teespring account. Oh, nice. Making masks. Custom oh, masks for sweet. people. There's no, you know how much I put into the business? Zero bucks. So tell us about that. So Teespring. Teespring.com. It's actually a little bit of a side hustle that I uh, found as a result of TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, Teespring, interesting. I know people are hustling for masks, and now masks are like the new fashion statement. Yeah. So I was like, okay, we're going to start making masks. And it is this much money, zero dollars, to start an account. And to do everything, all you have to do is design it and have a good eye for what people, have a have a pulse on what people might buy, design it. So I started designing like um, basically brands for like, that were, or, that were oriented toward like women, younger girls that like, you know, they're into like. All you need is love. I have a brand that's called I, or Love is All You Need. And mm. It's just a heart that says love is all you need. Then I've got like, it's, it's called All the Lips. And they're like, like, like glossy, lipstick. like lipstick. You put the mask on and it's like these like lips. And it's, uh, so you know, who, who makes the product? Describing it over audio makes it sound creepy. <laughs> I'm realizing that now. I'm going to work on my elevator pitch. Uh, <laughs> so maybe for the podcasters. Or anybody listening, just ignore what I'm saying. But anyway, it's it's zero dollars, yeah. and people have purchased it already. I've made profit already, and I put nothing in. So who, who makes the product? They do. They Teespring. take care of everything. Teespring is an interesting platform. They take care of everything: fulfillment, manufacturing, returns, issues, customer service. All you have to do is design it. They give you a cut. Which is, I think, it's like fifty percent or something like that. But who cares? By the way, in your design, yes, and I'm business a designer. model because uh, so T spread. Have, you've never I'm heard? Not of tea familiar, spread? no. But so I'm, it's I'm now I'm intrigued. Where they came from? Okay. Well, so so yeah. they 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 are a manufacturer of T-shirts. Maybe they have vendors where they print and do things like yeah. that. Yeah. Not even to they, get off track, but they no, put, no this is this is really interesting. Free. Uh, it's not off track because you didn't have to spend any money. Yeah, no, is it? Do they do one-offs? Yep. Teespring itself allows 
whoever to become their own like their own salesperson. So mm. so Al is going in and designing his own masks. Teespring's handling all of the stuff and shipping and everything like that. So they don't have to do as much marketing because right. Al is the one marketing He's his the business. I'm doing it myself. So here's, yeah. here's my store. Uh, you know, I saw that. There you go. But I didn't, uh, you, you didn't elaborate. So I, I did yoga the... pants. Okay, I have a question about this one. That's the one that got weird. Because <laughs> when I first looked at it, it sort of looks like a jack strap. <laughs> is that a mask that a looks like a jack strap? strap? I guess. Why is it going I told down? you it's got, it's weird. I'll is it a, is it a, ba you, is you it a bandana? Is it a bandana? No, it's a face mask. Uh. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> people need those too. <laughs> but anyway, the yoga pants, the, the you know, the pillow. Yeah. I like the yoga pants. I'd like to get a mask Love that matches my need. pocket square. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just working on this now. Nice. Like I'm, I'm building now, the now products. Gonna, it's going to end up being I, a very literally large store. Literally, in my it. Amazon inbox, I have an, a, a I'll order buy a for masks. Shot. Yeah, great. What size? size. <laughs> extra, extra, extra large, small. We don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, good. I'm going to cancel my Amazon. It is order. what it is, but it's free. Yeah. So you can literally have your own clothes. You can make as many storefronts as you want. You can name it whatever you and want. You'll design it for me, so you can do a blueprint. Hundred percent. Jockstrap. Yes. Fantastic. Precisely. So we're going to get a lot of people listening to this that are like, yeah, yeah, like you can do those internet businesses like, you know, with no funding and things like that. But like a, a construction company or something like that, like you need tons of equipment to 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 start that. Go rent it. Want to challenge that, right? Rent the equipment. Rent the equipment. Um, I uh, didn't you. Did you do that for your first business? No, I'm thinking of somebody else. I have a mm -mm. friend who started a. I think he started a lawn well, care company and it bounced into construction. He did like home re renovations and things. Yeah. But he rented his first lawn mowers. He rented this his you know first equipment. I'll and challenge just that build all it, day. Bill it into the into the wages. Yeah. I'll challenge that all day because that's ex precisely how I started my production company, my event production company. Yeah. Which, which was I was offering huge things, things I could I could never afford to buy. Mm -hmm. But I put it on my website and I listed it. And I thought, oh, I don't need to do, I just need to know what I want the finished product to be. And everybody thought I owned all these stages and I owned all of this lighting and I owned all this gear and everything. And I didn't own anything. Did you just bill it in? Build it into the cost? I subcontracted everything out. It was all under my name. I used all vendors that I trusted with my life and I aligned with them and I said like, this, this is, my contract, I'm, the, I'm like, it's on my thing. This is what needs to be done. And they loved it because I was just feeding them work. Yeah. So if I was a contractor and I had no tools, I would go get a contract, a construction company that already was doing it. And I'd be like, I have a job for you. Yeah. They would do it. I would oversee it to make sure it was under my standards. Yeah. Take the you're, money. You're a general contractor. General, general contractor. Yeah. And Which I, is crazy because general contractors that are super successful are super successful so I'm saying like and they don't, don't need to the have shit. any overhead my old before the law firm I was in the fitness world and the owner of the gym her husband was a big time contractor built all the Aldi's and KFC's yeah. and like all of these like duplicatable chains mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh he had <laughs> he had two rooms his office was two rooms above the gym like sharing the office space up there with all the trainers and stuff like that. He had two rooms. And it was him and an assistant. Uh, and that was it. That was in his, his entire company. And they're pulling in over $100 million. I mean, his take is probably something like yeah. 6 or $7 million a year. Mm. That was it. Like, so you do not he need doesn't have the, any equipment. You do not need to have the connections to, to have the resources to get it done. You need to know the person that has the resources to get it done. Yeah. And then promise that nothing goes wrong. Because yeah. that was it. My only thing was... That's the thing. You I assume responsibility. I took so. on all the responsibility legally, mm -hmm. uh, relationship-wise. Mm -hmm. They trusted me to make sure nothing went wrong. So that's why I had to have flawless relationships with my vendors yeah. and processes in place to know, like, okay, you know, like yeah. <laughs> if something goes wrong, I need a backup vendor to get the job done. I need all these things. But more often than not, everything goes pretty smoothly. Yeah. But worst case scenario, if you have a skill and you don't have money 
to mm-hmm. buy the tools or to buy the gear or to buy the stages or whatever it is. Just get somebody that does and yeah. then take your cuts over and over and over again. And that may either turn into you going to buy the stuff yourself or just never stopping that process. Yeah. Because yeah. why would you? <laughs> and you, you know? can collect things along the way, right? Like right. that's sort of how Good Monster did it. We have a we have equipment now that we acquired just we bought a camera and then we bought another camera and then some mics and like this mm-hmm. thing. Like we yeah. just... Yeah, in-house it, stuff. Yeah, but we still contract out a lot of like all of our filming stuff, right. you know? But you never had this. And that's what all the big agencies, the, all the agencies, I used, we used to get tons of work from agencies mm-hmm. for video production. Because yeah. they would just hire out video production companies. We would do all the commercials. Then they then they were like, oh, well, geez, why don't we bring it in-house? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now a lot of them are sending it back out to third parties because it's like they don't want to do it. Yeah. Because if they wanted to do video production, they would have started a video production company yeah. and not an agency. Here's the thing, too, with video production is it's very... Um, st- like stylistic, stylistic right? So yeah. like a certain video production team has has a certain skill set and a certain style. Right, for but sure. what happens if they want something totally different? Right, you got to go shop it and, out. And you know we, I, like I've seen companies that are great with like cinematic, trying mm-hmm. to do funny stuff. Nope, does not. It nope. does not doesn't compute. Translate. Yeah, thing, yeah. Doesn't translate. So we've covered, we've covered service businesses. Barter is my favorite. Barter is the best. Talk about it all day long. Barter is Boot the best strap. one. Bootstrap one product at a time until you get the enough money to, to, to take the next step. Yeah. Uh, we didn't, I haven't talked about... Business pitch competitions. Well, business pitch competitions. That's like if you... Like, those are great. I just actually looked up because I was curious. Like, are competitions still going on? How many are there? I mean, Eventbrite has just a list of oh, yeah. competitions. There's like... Typically... There's three free, of them going on right now today. Typically free to enter, right? Or... Sometimes you have to submit team. an application. You have to submit your product. You yeah. know things like that to get accepted to them. But and it depends. There's small ones yeah. where it's like five grand, and then there's big ones like um, Forty Three North is in Buffalo, mm-hmm. and that was a million dollars. The requirement was you had to move to Buffalo for a year, like your operations. You had to be mm-hmm. if you won, you had to be in the competitions. Yeah, but you know you have you have traditional like V no traditional but like VC. Fund funding, and then you have business p- pitch competitions, which are mm-hmm. kind of in the same similar. You have to pitch, you have yeah. to present, you have to sell the idea. Um, so that's that's good if you need the capital because mm-hmm. you are a product intensive company. You know, yeah. right. product development things like that. Of course, there's just there's some businesses where you it's going to be hard to bootstrap. Like, of course, right? So what Rob said early on well, is, what's, is what's an example. Uh, Let's just think of a business that's going to be tough to bootstrap. Like like te- like a technology, a tech I think company. is is tough unless right. it's unless it's purely With software, service. unless it's purely right. software and you are the genius coder. But even then, you're if it grows, a book developers like are really expensive. Yeah. Like a developer makes easily six figures like yeah. right out of school most of the time, and. Once you try to scale a software company, like you need to hire develop, like that's where most of the funding goes is yeah, the team. Right. Server space is the other big one. You can't build one of these things without paying Amazon Web oh, Services server, yeah, a yeah, yeah. shitload of money to host it. It does. Mm-hmm. It has to live somewhere, and you have to pay mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so tech companies, but also hardware tech, like the R and D that goes into that. Um, I mean, I don't know it very well. I just know some people who've started those businesses. Yeah. I was gonna say authors like books, but then I thought, no, there's a way around that. Like you could, you can get around that and bootstrap it. We have a prospect actually, a good monster we're talking to now, who's an, a first-time author, very successful businessman, sold his business, mm-hmm. and, and he's now an author. Which coincidentally is Pitching. a lot of people right now. A lot yeah. of authors right now, man. They're they're having time on their hands, so they're yep. waiting. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he's he wants to self-publish because of the competition right now. Right. He's like, man, I've talked to a few publishers and they're just like, without a name or a big budget or yep. something behind they don't you, want we have so many pitches going on right now for oh. books. He's like, it's not, you're going to get lost in the weeds. Oh yeah. So he's looking into self-publishing and there's a lot of resources to self-publish. Yeah. The key is, is marketing. The key is just, if somebody right. wants your book because it's amazing or they want their, they are interested in your backstory and you self publish like there's there's no issues i mean mm-hmm. that's that's the biggest part is to right. like get people to really want you and to see but i mean like authors. in terms of uh, bootstrapping the 
you don't need to bootstrap the words. You can put the words on paper and you can get the paper out there, right, to people. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of the most stripped down way that like you can get that it's piece of work be a digital ebook That's, into yeah. somebody's hands. But then like for example, kids books, right? You need to pay for an illustrator or you need to know one that's got to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or any kind of, you know, images that come with that covers, you know, things like that. That would be tough to bootstrap unless you could do it yourself. I mean, if or barter. If you really had no money, I I would go right into an audiobook. Right? Like if you oh. if you had no money and no way to get the right. printing cuz you do need capital for that or you need yeah. a partner. There's companies that that's all they do. Yeah. Is they'll handle the printing and all of that kind of stuff. Obviously publishers, old school yeah, publishers yeah. will too. But there's um um I could probably look up the companies now, but there's a company that will he like hear your ideas and you can they get a percentage yeah, of the sales just, yeah. take some equity to do or the whatever. printing. But if if I had literally zero dollars right now, but I had the best story ever, ever I would I would put it into an audio book mm -hmm. and then get it up on Amazon or get it into Audible or something like right. that. Because yeah, you just and let people pay for the studio on. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Because, yeah. you, of course, you have certain people that want to read the book. They like the feel, the paper, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a huge section and, of people that, like me, I don't read books. I listen to them on... Yeah. On Audible, yeah, mm -hmm. and I if you have I'm no money, to, yeah, you get those people. Yeah, and so it's, there's that. There's uh, then there's the traditional funding. You know, you could technically go to a bank, bank, and do like I need a business loan or a personal loan, right? Which I would never advise. It's but insane. Like, it's if you thing. have no history, like of being a start an entrepreneur, or having a business, right. like it's, it's an extremely unlikely. I'm a yeah. I'm a big proponent of personal loans. Like private loans, mm -hmm. there's a lot of private shark-ish kind of companies out there that that's what they do. They're not banks, but then there's you know people you know, yeah. And if you <laughs> knew somebody that you could say, hey, I need twenty five grand, and I'll pay you back, guaranteed with three percent interest in under six months. Well, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Like they'll never make that in any capacity ever. Right. Eat, not you, the market, not you know. No. So no. like that's I'm a big fan of those, but that's about your relationships and networking and hanging with the right cats and yeah. Uh, credit card is credit the other card. One. Oh god. So that's that. Shoot that's me. more likely to get than a bank loan if you're just starting oh, right. out is to go and get a credit card because they'll look at your yeah. credit. What are they'll we look talking at your, about? Ten grand. Yeah, maybe 10, if 10, you got ten twenty if you're credit. really. Yeah, yeah, but you're, mostly you're going to get, what, thirty, thirty one hundred dollars $3,100, 3 to five grand. It depends yeah. on your situation, like who you are, you know, how old you are. Right. You know, your credit score. You know, the other thing out, that's out there are, uh, found, there are foundations, you know, that will um, hear your business story. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, where they people have basically uh, left their endowment for these organizations, mm -hmm. these nonprofits mm -hmm. to manage the money, mm -hmm. you pitch your idea, the board of directors basically has to hear it. Mm -hmm. The one downside with that is still, I believe today, is it becomes slightly political. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like if this guy in the board knows your your cousin Johnny and he thinks Johnny, you know, they, they've got a history, then you don't, you know, you don't get the money. Yeah. yeah. Because of that. Then there's Shark Tank. Then there's Shark Tank. Dobar Donuts. Dobar Donuts. Yeah. There's also Inheritance. Unfortunately, that comes with a very sad event, but it happens. Yes. We and also, there. unlikely you can go find that. I know. I know a couple of real shady guys that do, though. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get this, I need to get this How done. How did they start their business? They, they're, they're <laughs> garbage. I know, I'm not friends with them, but I know a couple of guys that, like, would target... Older people. This is real. This, this is, is real. real thing, I thought you just made this no, up. No, this, is, this oh. is. A, I mean, we're not. This is a, shouldn't even be in the show. But they, yeah, they were. Gloss over it. They were. You know, antique dealers. They, they. They. Guys themselves is like antique dealers, and they would basically target people with old things, mm -hmm. right? That didn't know much about anything, and they would schmooze them up, and basically in the estate sale, cleaned house. Yeah. Because they had the knowledge. Took advantage. And they're but, like, oh, this is worth yeah. two bucks. Right. Not not a good situation. Yeah. That's, that's a way of funding. Hmm. So um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, you know, to kind of round us out here a little bit, like. Which is a good point. Ethical. Eth ethical yeah. and having a moral compass. <laughs> sort of key to. Is key in funding. Navigating funding. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad I said it, actually, because, like, keep that at the forefront. Yeah. 
or that shit's gonna go bad. I'll go through. We can all go through kind of our our you know our favorite ways, but you know in 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 today's even current climate, the mm-hmm. Corona you know climate, like I am wildly uh, uh, excited about just using yeah. like your skills, whatever it is. Like the yeah. problem is people are like, I have no skills. Like you do. Like my writer friend who was a writer, she, like her job was literally writing. I, th- I think she did this um, because she just had another child, right? So she's just looking for like some other, mm-hmm. and she, she tutors kids now, right? Everybody so like has everyone has a skill that they can figure out. Like you just have to step back yeah. and just figure out Even what Even if it it's is. just like, I'm really good at organizing. Great. Mer- who's that? Who's the Asian lady who's like wildly? She's on oh, TV. Marie Kondo? Yeah. What does she do? She organizes. She comes and oh, just yeah. organizes people's oh, life. Jeez. <laughs> and she does it like a like a good for her. Yeah. I, give me her number. Uh, she might be out of your price range. Okay, I can do it myself. Okay, <laughs> just watch her videos. Yeah, she's got a whole show. Yeah. Yeah. So, or you? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say for people listening, like, if you're looking for funding, or you're have questions about this. Like message us, send us messages about like, gee, here's my, here's what I'm trying to do. You know, we're happy to help. Providing value is the, is the key to this, to success yeah. for give, 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 you know, bartering and, and find, you know, finding non-traditional ways to kind of fund yeah. your business. Right. Like, mm-hmm. like showing value, giving value, the sky's the limit. Yeah. And at the beginning over give, like. You don't need to, I mean, I know there's been situations where, that we've gotten into where there was a fine line. Uh, and I think that once you get to a certain point in your business, there is a fine line of overgiving and then like giving away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, you, you walk this line between, did we give too much? Did we under, did we just undervalue ourselves? Blah, yeah. blah. But for the very beginning, beginning stages, screw that model and over, over give as much as possible because you have nothing to lose. It's all upside. And that overgive could be the thing that that person's like, oh my God, you gotta right. go do business with Al. Right. Holy shit, look at this and thing he did for me. And then boom, now you Adjust get- the dials as you grow. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you've, if you've got a full-time job that's paying your bills. Mm-hmm. Right. You, know, you can afford it to do some of those things or early on in your side hustle. Yeah. I guess we so didn't even mention this. and I the stories. Yeah, it's not like this, Sometimes it's not good, and I think you're gonna, you know, have some some uh, comments on this. But like using savings to fund a business, right? I mean, we hear mm-hmm. a lot of stories of founders that use their savings and like oh, got do. into debt, but yeah. then they climbed out. And like, you know, there's listen. This show's not us recommending necessarily like certain no. funding. No, but in a, if you in have an savings, ep- in an episode, I don't know when this episode will air, but Greg talks about. The thing he did yeah. to save his business, yeah. which, you know, I won't ruin the episode, but it, it put a lot of stress shit on the line, yeah. including his marriage. <laughs> and it's a very similar story to the Airbnb guys yeah. that sold Obama O's and McCain, Captain yeah. McCain cereal. Crazy. Like if you got, if you're listening, you don't know this story, just Google Airbnb Obama O's. That was I mean, very early in podcast we had. <laughs> yeah. They, uh. They needed money. Like they were, I think they were in debt. I think they yeah. were like 80 grand in debt or something like yeah. that. Yeah. It was nuts. And they cleaned house on and the Obama O's. They go to a presidential like debate and yeah. sold cereal with Obama on one box and McCain like in cartoon characters. And they, mm-hmm. they I don't know what the number is. Look it up. But um, let's look it up right now because it's crazy. Obama. But I do, I want to hear from people like, you know, you watch this video or you listen, like comment or message us. Do you just private message us and um, tell us what you're what you're thinking about doing? You know, we're super interested. We want to help, or or tell us other funding concepts that we haven't talked about today. That things that you've done, just share stories and comment, and you know, absolutely get some conversation going. So Obama O's sold out in three days after they were reselling. People were reselling them for three hundred fifty dollars per box on Craigslist. Crazy. Freaking unbelievable. Like, get creative. I don't know where the value is in that. I guess just well, um, some the deli- right time, some delicious. Yeah, the, the right, right time, time right the place. right right place, and the right product. Supply yeah. and demand. Yeah. Just like right now, you make a killing on masks. Two years ago, they'd Teespring. Be like, 
I'm not gonna buy your mask with the stupid lips on it. It looks like a jack strap. But I will <laughs> you buy might, it You might today. get a certain subsection of people that will. That's fine, man. I will literally take orders from <clears> anyone. <throat> we don't discriminate over at Teespring. There you go. Awesome. As always, we are super appreciative to all of you watching or listening. Remember, you can catch us on Facebook, YouTube, and now IGTV in video format. And you can listen on Spotify, Apple, and Google Play. Uh, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we'll be here every Tuesday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time. Time. Yeah. Z. Cheers to everyone. Cheers. To life and business. Maybe boys from both. <laughs> Hey everyone, remember if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Play, leave a review. Leave a five star review because you love us. That's how we will get more people to share our journey that is the Noble Company. Uh, in this podcast, I'm a little buzzed. So remember, leave a review. We love you. We would love for you to tell the world how much you love us. And we'll see you next show.